everyone, welcome to part two of beekeeping with Benito. Today we're going to look into different crossbreeds and different sorts, types of bees you can get and what they're all used for. So let's get going. Okay guys, so to start looking at different types of breeds, you have to generally know about different biome bees. So last time we found some meadows bees, there are also jungle bees, which are called tropical bees, you have forest bees, which are called forest bees. Desert bees, which I think are called... I can't remember what they're called, humble or something like that, you know. Um, no, I can't remember those, Fred. Uh, and then you can get winter biome bees, which are called wintery or icy or, you know, something like that. So we've got a few more apiaries set up here, and we're just going to use the forest and the meadow bee queens. And I will show you why we're going to use those. We're in here. We can search for what's it called? Oh, I cannot remember what it's called now. Well, we need to make a bee analyzer first, which is a quite complicated recipe. You're going to need a few things for it, like a carpenter and a diamond, you know, and that will get you started with some of the stuff you need to do. So, let's see, we have a squeezer, we have a carpenter. So, what I'm just going to do is destroy this. Maybe I need a pick. Let's just make a wooden one for simplicity's sake. Okay, we're going to destroy the carpenter. Get all that good stuff. Place it down. This is just so it can be cleared again. Okay, then you want to fill that with water. You need tin, diamonds, and redstone. Let's have a look at how these are doing. So I'm just keeping an eye on how the bees are going. A few more apiaries so we can have more bees. But uh, I'm going to get the stuff needed to make this thing and we will be right back. Okay guys, we have the stuff to make the bee analyzer. So come over to the counter, I'm going to drop a load of water cans in there. Now was it glass or glass panes? Okay, glass panes. So I'll mix them up real quick. Then we put two glass panes in there. Those in there. Diamond goes in the bottom, redstone at either side. Then tin, 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 tin. Very good. And that will start crafting that for us. Let's turn it on. Is it already on? What are we missing? Oh, I haven't put that in there. There we go. That will start crafting. While we do that, we can also make the other thing, which I've remembered now. A habitat locator. So you pick that up, got it down in your inventory, and you can see all the different biomes and stuff you can get here. And basically this is so you can tell what bees go in, what you want. So we can take this bee, we can open this up, put it in there. Nothing will happen, because we need this honey. So we need to get the honey out. And you don't squeeze it out, so you need to get a... So let's see, we only need these honey drops. And you get them by putting a centrifuge down and just sticking them inside. So you need one centrifuge which is this one here, it's quite simple to make you just need a lot of bronze and copper really so we're going to get one of them once this is done there we go, so let's grab those out of there now we have bee analyzer which works pretty much the same way, you put a bee in there but you need the honey so to get honey, there we go, so this is the bees to get honey we need to centrifuge this honeycomb while we wait for that, wait to crossbreed this is how I'm going to start one branch bee. So there's lots of different combinations, far too many for me to cover in one video. So I'm just going to do some of the simple ones. So forest and meadows are what we're going to start with. And we do the same here, forest and meadows. Forest and meadows. This can take a few attempts to get the right bee to mutate. So we're just going to keep mixing them up till we get what we want. Ah, here we go. And then here we have a common drone, which is the next like set, step up from crossbreeding and meadows in a forest. I'm just going to put them together as well, and we're just going to let those keep going while I go get a centrifuge and get that all set up. So back in a second. So here we have the centrifuge. I've set it up the exact same way, just for simplicity's sake, to be powered by the electric engine and the solar panel. Of course, you'll have to figure out your own way to power it. But here we go. You stick the honeycomb inside, and it will slowly tick up like so until you get a bit of honey drop and some beeswax so we can use the beeswax now and I can start with showing you what this bee analyzer does 
So you drop your drone or princess or queen or whatever you have in there, and you go to take it out, and it will stick it down there. So now we can see all this information. That's the species. So it's a mixed between meadows and forest. It has a short lifespan, it's slow speed. It likes flowers, because like I said in the last episode, there are different types of bees which like different things. This is how many breeds it will make when it dies. It's like a property it has. That's the area from which it can detect flowers. Uh, that's an effect, which this has none. There are different effects we'll get into later when we get to some more advanced stuff. You can see a few things about different things like nocturnal, flyers, caves, and they're just different traits you can get by special breeding and all that. Climates are another part of bee breeding. Like I said, you can get winter bees and you can get desert bees, and they prefer their own biomes. So a cold climate will obviously be in a snow biome, and warm climate will be in like a desert or a jungle. It'll also tell you what they can make, so you can just make the basic honeycombs, and it'll tell you about these mutations. So this is all about the crossbreeding when you get to that stage, getting those mutations. Now we have some more, we can take this, the habitat locator, put a drop in there, get the bee, and now we can see which bees it will grow in. So it'll grow in an ocean, plains, hills, forest, and even the end, which I kind of find surprising. I would have thought that would have been a cold biome or something. So it can't like grow in mushrooms, hell, jungle, tiger, you know, all that good sort of stuff. So that's how that works. But if you can, if you know generally what biomes what with the bee analyzer, you, just from these two, you can kind of work out where you want to go. And this tolerance thing, it means um, if it's normal, but they have like that's up, it means they can withstand like the hot temperatures and deserts and things as well. So you can, that's how you can identify different types of breeds. And as you can see, if you just mouse over, it some basic information about what it is. So that's very good. And obviously, this centrifuge is going to be very important to what you're doing. So you're going to want to take these honeycombs they make for the most part and always centrifuge them when we get onto the actual using the produce. So I'll come back over here, put that in, get some more honey. You can just put this honey all in gonna keep a couple of drops there, we'll put that inside my habitat locator and we'll test the forest drone now to show you the difference. So the same thing to identify this is cross breed in meadows uh, the other way around, it's a forest and meadow, so this is a meadows forest. Short life again, that's the same really because it's still the same, it's produced the same things and pretty much all the same there. If we look at biomes, again it's pretty much the same ones. If you find some winter bees and things like that, they will be different. I see, because you've identified it, it will actually tell you a bit more about how the crossbreeding grows, which is quite cool. So let's see. I'm going to wait for these to tick down, see if I get some more crossbreeds, and show you them. So, back in a moment. Alright then, the bees are just about to pass on to the next stage of the cycle, so we'll check that in a second. First, I want to show you the wintry queen, which is just bred with a wintry princess and a wintry drone, you can see it's got a normal sort of species is wintry, this is all the same. This is interesting, I haven't actually seen the freezing effect before, so I don't know what that is to be perfectly honest with you, but it's one of the examples of how bees can have effects, like there's some which can poison you, some which can damage you, some which actually give you regen, which is pretty cool. And this is quite a first will be that will produce four when it dies instead of three. So we move it down, you can see it needs an icy climate. But it has a tolerance of up one, so it can do it in a relatively, you know, warm environment. Humidity is normal. Uh, it's not a turn, it's not a flyer, it's not a cave thing. Go down again. It was just a special icy honeycomb or frozen honeycomb, whatever it's called. And finally, we have found no mutations for it. So just to show you about the different, uh, the whole thing is put it in here. It won't work basically because it's not a icy place basically, so it's not going to work here. So we're going to put these back in there, let them breed up again. Do the same here because we need to get some more uh, common drones, as you saw earlier. Because it's just a matter of luck and chance. If you keep breeding you will eventually get the common drones. There we go, we've got another one. And then over here we still need to breed this up. So I'm just going to keep breeding these till I get some more common, till I get a common princess really. That's what I need to get to go to the next stage, uh, so I'll be back in just a moment.
Okay guys, bees are getting close to another cycle again, so I thought I'd show you one of the reasons why you want these different bees. Because uh, obviously you've got this honeycomb, but you can also get dripping comb, stringy comb, frozen comb, and silky comb. And just as they are, they don't really do anything. But when you put them in the centrifuge, there you go. see last time we got this beeswax and this honey drop. This time we got honeydew and a honey drop from the dripping comb, from the stringy comb. Once this is done, we'll let this one tick over. There we go, got some honeydew from this one. So let's grab those. From the stringy comb we get, it does take a little while, but each one of these gives a different material. So we got a honey drop and a propolis from the frozen comb we put in next. While that's going, we'll have a quick check of the bees. So we have another common drone, which we're not too worried about. Uh, still not got any here. Okay, so let's check this. Uh, we just got bees racks and a honey drop from that one. So we put it in again because I want to get the special things from each one. Uh, we've got another common drone and a princess here. So let's put those together. Like so we've got more common drones here. So we'll keep them with us. Over here, still in the common drones. I want to get to at least the next rank just to show some stuff. So, ah, uh, just bees racks again. Okay, we'll leave that for now, and then we put the silky comb in, which will get us a honey drop again, and a silky propolis, which works as a normal propolis, or you can centrifuge it again to get the silk wisp. We'll get into all the different products later. This is just showing you why you want these different breeds, because there might be a. There you go. We got a snowball from that one, which is awesome. So, poof, snowball. So let's open up this and we're going to check out this common drone. So we can see it works in the end, the forest, the plains, the oceans. Yeah, it's like a normal drone. Then we're going to go put it in here. So you can see it's still got the short life, it's not going to make many, normal area. That's all the same, it's been in three generations of captivity. Still makes just normal honeycomb. But we can see here, there's this next bee, which is a sort of purple one. So usually you have to discover these, I already have because of my staging area that I have. So we found out it can become this purple bee via breeding with okay, a forest one or a meadows one. So that's what we now know we have to do. So we need to get this up to a princess level, which is why we're breeding it with the queens again, so we can try and get a, a common princess, just so we can get to the next level. So we're nearly done with this episode now, I just want to get to that to show you the next two, next rank, so back in one more moment. Okay guys, bees are finishing off, you can see the icons are disappearing. So we've got another drone here, kind of useless for now. Then we, oh here we go, now we have the cultivated bee, which is the purple one we saw earlier. So we'll grab that one, we can do some identifying with it, so you can have a look at it. So it's a mix between cultivated and forest. It's got a short life. It can produce free again if we read it the right way. This is all the same. Five generations of captivity it keeps going up. Still just produces this honeycomb. But you can see here all the different ways of can have to it. So that's a funny pink one. We can get a gold one. So that's how we got it from the common one. So that's how we got to this brown one. Uh, purple one, sorry. Uh, okay, we're going to check the biomes again. You don't have to do this because obviously we know it's the same sort of ones because it likes the same temperatures. It just pops out. I'm just going to put that in there, breed up with the common one. And then from here, there we go, we're getting quite a few now. Just going to breed these together. Okay, these are still those. So we're going to throw the common one in there, just do a bit of mixed breeding, try and get some more. So basically, now we have this cultivated one. That is the sort of starting area for all the different sort of species you can get. So we can get all different ones like noble bees and um, let's see what else, industrial bees. From this, this is the real starting area when you get the cultivated one. Uh, like I said, it would take me quite a while to go through all the bees, especially if I included the extended bee mod. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is down in the com uh, the description below. I'm going to include a link to a very useful beekeeping guide that was done by the Johan Solo, which is quite an awesome name really. And it basically covers every bee you'd want 
really all the bees you want including the extended guide it's very it's a very awesome guide and it will tell you what bees you can get what sort of combs they produce anything else they produce as well so if you want guides on how to breed a specific type of bee for what you want check out that guide I'm sure you'll like it there's a lot of work into it but yeah this is where it really starts off when you get to this cultivated one from there you can branch off into all the sorts of different ones like uh, and the industrial one like I said or the imperial bees and with that you can get all this different stuff which we'll get into later about all the different uses you actually have for your bees because right now we're getting all this stuff and we've got no real use for it beside more bees so eventually later episode probably episode 4 we're going to get onto that next episode will be in how to increase your productivity the different ways you can do that and there's several ways you can do such things but we'll leave that for next time I hope you enjoyed as always and hope this has been helpful for you and if you check out the next ones we can look at how to increase productivity with these free slots and a few other techniques so see you next time toodles